Live from our second Tasmanian studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, Tasmanian veterans are united in their opposition of the Macquarie Point Stadium. The state's RSL sub-branch is voting unanimously against it, saying they've been given few answers on how the cenotaph would be affected. It's a post of solemn remembrance, but RSL Tasmania says the sacred grounds of Hobart's cenotaph would be overshadowed by Macquarie Point Stadium. This wasn't just put anywhere. It was put on a place of ground where that the commanding views. That cenotaph says to the world behind us that Tasmania will play its part. Not against a stadium, just this location, holding concerns over the size, build time and environmental impact. Having sought that information from the government but not received it. You would not buy a car without knowing its colour and its size. You wouldn't buy a car without knowing if it fit in your drive. But we have been asked to do that. Joining the Vietnam Veterans Association in opposition. How in good conscience can you continue with your stadium knowing how the veteran community feels about it? We will work with, uh, sit down with in a very respectful way and uh, work through any uh, concerns. In order to house 23,000 footy fans, it's been estimated a Macquarie Point Stadium could be as high as 40 metres. That's nearly as tall as Hobart's Hotel Grand Chancellor. Um, early design work uh, demonstrates that uh, key sight lines to the cenotaph will not be impacted. Meanwhile, the Greens have their sights on the speaker, Mark Shelton. They say he personally worked to secure a $400,000 grant to the Bracknell Hall redevelopment, which he sits on a steering committee for. All of this occurred without any attempt by Mr Shelton to appropriately avoid, disclose or manage his obvious conflict of interest. Uh, Mr Shelton had every right to uh, engage with the uh, former Premier and uh, Treasurer about a project that needed funding, of course, in uh, his own electorate. The Premier still not answering if he sees it as a conflict of interest. For more on politics, we're joined by state political reporter Josh Duggan. Josh, it seems teachers are about to walk off the job. That's right, Kim. They've made that threat today. The Australian Education Union says teachers have still not received a final pay and conditions offer from the state government, despite their agreement ending today. They've written an open letter to the Education Minister and Premier saying enough is enough and they shouldn't have to beg for more in-class support or help with workload. They were part of mass public sector strikes last November and thousands of them turned up at Parliament lawns. It comes as the government announces education reforms, committing to statewide structured literacy plans with a greater emphasis on phonics. The tools there for schools to be able to use, we now need to ensure that they're all using them the best way possible and that they have the resource and the guidance and the support. Wherever they are across the state and whatever their demographic characteristics are, that they have the same opportunities and the same high quality literacy instruction. They've also begun designing universal access to early childhood education with pilot sites to be up and running next year. Kim. Well, Tasmania's university bosses have been grilled on the inner workings of the education provider during a parliamentary hearing. Committee members fired off concerns over accommodation and barriers for students, with the Vice-Chancellor insisting access is being put before profit. A light-hearted interruption breaking the ice on an all-important inquiry. I found this on the web. Thanks, Sarah. That's very good. <laughs> the university's makeup under the microscope once again. This time, the organisation's leaders were at the centre of the Legislative Council hearing, highlighting their commitment to ensure higher education is accessible for every Tasmanian. How the university is fulfilling that function, um, specifically in Tasmania, taking into consideration those inequities that exist. We've got to open the doorways, whether it is through pathways or through schools, to, to do that. The price of accommodation outlined as a potential hurdle to obtaining a qualification. Student accommodation is being provided at rents that actually aren't uh, attainable mm. for students. How is that fulfilling this function? It's to be um, at most at, but 
wherever we wherever we can be at under at under market at under market rates. The accommodation services we provide are not about making a profit; they are about providing access. Senior management acknowledging adjustments can be made to better improve the University Act. Some kind of expression um, in the form of a preamble of what Parliament's expectations are of us in that regard and what that means. Um, I think that would be extremely helpful. Decision makers were also quizzed on what they are doing to strengthen the function of the University Council with questions put forward on how diversity is monitored within the membership. Currently, um, half of our council is, is female. Typically, council members might, you know, have four or five different skills, experiences and attributes that they bring that are relevant and, and valuable. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. The 49-year-old woman involved in a sexting scandal with former Test cricket captain Tim Payne has been spared jail time. Renee Ferguson fronting the Hobart Magistrates Court today where she was ordered to serve eight months of home detention. The sentencing comes after she was caught stealing $5,600 from her former employer, Cricket Tasmania and the Hobart Hurricanes. Ms Ferguson will be monitored by an electronic device while carrying out her term in Tasmania, despite relocating to Victoria in 2019. A case of devil facial tumour disease has been detected for the first time in the far northwest of the state. The marsupial was found dead with suspected lesions on Harkus River Road near Woolnorth. It was located more than 20 kilometres away from the closest confirmed cases. More information is being sought to understand whether greater numbers of the animal population will be impacted. A driver has escaped serious injury on the East Tamer Highway when the car collided with a truck north of Launceston. The crash happened between University Way and the Mowbray Link this morning. Motorists were diver diverted for around an hour. The Racing Minister has given a timeline of when she knew of former TAS Racing CEO Paul Erickson's firing. Madeleine Ogilvie says she was told about his departure on July 1, five days before she issued a media release which omitted the information. I'm prevented from reaching into operational no, matters. Employment sure matters are All operating. Since his firing was revealed in December last year, the minister has bucked questions about what she knew of it. A new soccer program is helping Tasmanian girls fall in love with the beautiful game. While some talented athletes are choosing to play on boys' teams, it's hoped the female football initiative will help boost competition in the state's north. At just 11 years old, Hayley Hawkins is already an old hand at the world game. Mum said that before I even started, I was always like wanting to get on the field. Her skills are in high demand, playing on both girls and boys teams. I feel like female um, football is a bit different. Um, I, it has more passing and I think boys has more running. She's kicking goals at a new program aimed at increasing female soccer participation in the state's north. With the FIFA Women's World Cup kicking off this year, local football fanatics have created a space for girls to play. We really want to be a holistic program that um, yeah, provides the girls with all the tools they need to succeed. Exercise physiologist Danielle is on hand to provide strength and injury prevention training to the girls. Growing up during teenage years, I never had access to this. It would have been such a great initiative to be able to join a club, come out, be active. Organisers have partnered with sports and health specialists so girls can start off on the right foot without breaking the bank for parents. There's a couple of good programs going on but requires a lot of money. Having a ball and making football fun for everyone. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. New dads trying to swing their love of golf with family life now have a way to strike the right balance. From tonight, birdies and bubs will give parents critical social time as they navigate the course of parenthood. Teeing off on a way to combine six irons and six month olds. A lot of people choose between golf that they love doing and, and their new baby, which obviously they love. Uh, so now we can do both. For Will White, daughter Pip always comes first, but the new Birdies and Bubs group means he can connect with like minded dads and still enjoy some quality time. Being able to get out of the house and spend some time with your, your little one and do something that an activity that you enjoy doing. Another new dad, Gus Troop, devised the concept, his drive. 
is to help men trying to navigate fatherhood's fairways. It's about creating that social support, which I think will be really positive for a lot of people. Especially when they suddenly find themselves without much spare time. You can take an hour a week or an hour a month or you know, whenever you really want to come down and you're not stuck outside walking around. The concept means a baby doesn't need to be a handicap to your handicap. Oh, that's good. Birdies and Bubs is on Wednesday nights at Will Fit Indoor Golf Course in Invermay. And how long until baby Pip picks up a club too? Oh, she's close to standing, so give her another month. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian charity is breaking down barriers, launching a Braille version of its beloved children's book, Tassie Rhymes for Little Tigers. It's hoped the initiative will lift the state's literacy levels and change the way Australia's publishing industry operates. Turning a new page for vision impaired Tasmanians, the governor launching the Braille version of children's picture book Tassie Rhymes for Little Tigers. There is a need for it and um, I hope that it is the start of many more books of this type. World Blind Union says there are only 10% of published books which are available to people with a print disability all over the world. Author and illustrator Neralda Joy says she had to start from scratch with the design, using high contrast colours and thick lines to cater for low vision needs. And it wasn't just the pictures that proved challenging. Braille has on a single page 40 characters across and 20 lines down, which means the amount of text you can fit on a page is actually quite small. The all-inclusive book is part of a Toast for Kids initiative to see more Tasmanian caregivers reading to their children. Tasmanian literacy rate hasn't improved basically over the last three decades and that doesn't do well for the future of the next generation. Only 20 copies have been printed so far. We want to to find out how many people out there are in need of this resource because it is unique to Australia what we have created. The book is free to new parents and will be on sale across well-known Australian bookshops. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Launceston residents are being urged to have their say on the council's draft urban greening strategy. The city is aiming to double Launceston's tree cover by 2040 by working with business groups and the University of Tasmania. We came up with this concept for Launceston to grow so much greener than what it is now. So it might be that we increase the, the amount of trees, it might be that we increase the amount of lawn, it might be that we increase the amount of community gardens. Launceston's green spaces currently cover 19% of the city, around half the national standard. Residents can have their say on the Launceston City Council website. The head of the army says recruiting more Tasmanians remains a priority. Lieutenant General Simon Stewart visiting Hobart to mark the army's 123rd birthday. He says the state has made a great contribution to the service, both in uniform and in industry, and he wants the strong link to continue. It's not just the number of Tasmanians, but it's the quality of people um, and, and I'm really keen to attract more Tasmanians to come and serve, whether it's part-time or full-time. Per capita, Tasmania leads the nation in the amount of people serving part-time. Glenorchy's president has told 7 Tasmania News he's aiming for a premiership within five years. He says while the club came close to being forced out of the TSL, the rebuild has begun. It comes as the TSL fixture was released today. A feeling of relief for one of Tasmanian football's most decorated clubs. After facing months of uncertainty, Glenorchy has a beating pulse. That was our main goal to start, we'll get a team on the ground. That's, and we've done that, so that's moving forward, we've just, we can only improve. A lack of players placing the future of the 104-year-old club in doubt over summer. The president says they faced extinction. Very close. Um, and we're still not out of the woods. If we go into recess, John, it's very, very hard to get back. Very hard to sell memberships, very hard to get sponsorship. Recent weeks have seen training numbers surge to 36, securing their TSL future. The president already looking to kick goals. Our next premiership team's coming out of the under-18s. Um, I've stated that we'll win a flag in four years. I'm very confident we'll do that. AFL Tasmania pleased with the outcome. We've probably bent a fair way uh, at different stages. We're right behind Glenorchy. We, they're just too important to footy. We were wanting to back them in from the start. Um, we really believed in their 
near history. The 2023 season fixture also dropped today. The season opens on Good Friday and features a mouth-watering northern derby. Two matches will be played on Anzac Day, including the Tigers and Magpies. Last year's grand finalists will square off in round five, while Clarence will play curtain raises before two North Melbourne matches at Blunston. And a familiar face is the new SFL president, with Franklin MP David O'Byrne appointed until 2024. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Die-hard Hawks fans have had their first glimpse of their heroes in the state this year. New skipper James Sicily led the Hawks onto Utah Stadium for the captain's run, ahead of tomorrow's practice match against a big crowd puller in Collingwood. The Hawks have one of the youngest lists in the league and are keen to throw some new faces into the midfield. Our first pick from last year, Cam McKenzie, will play a bit of time uh, through the midfield this week, which is he missed the game last week, so we want to give him some exposure against um, good AFL quality mids. Uh, similar to last week, our, our Day and Newcomb and Warpool, the same, same mix, will get another look again. The first bounce is at 10 past five and it's free entry. Hobart's hockey roo Matty Brooks says winning 2-0 against Argentina in her international debut was like a fairy tale. She received a hometown roar when she took to the field against one of the world's toughest opponents. After soaking up Hobart's love for the hockey roos during the national anthem, Matty Brooks felt it personally when she came on four minutes into the match. And there is Madison Brooks. The first Tasmanian to play for the Hockey Roos since Amelia Spence eight years ago. The OHA product found plenty of the action, smacking 11 passes during her time on the field. It's always been a dream of mine. I've grown up playing hockey. So yeah, to be able to put on my put on the green and gold for the first time was so exciting. Especially when it's in front of a home crowd. You don't really debut at home very often. After the anthem I was pretty pretty excited to go and the nerves kind of went away at that point. And everyone's nerves eased as the game went on. The Aussies too good, winning 2-0 against the second highest ranked nation in the world. We're all in tears watching um, their little uh, debut messages from their family. It's always such a uh, privilege to walk out with people who are playing their first game, especially uh, Maddie Brooks in her home state was really cool to be a part of. For the Kookaburras, the Tassie love had to be split three ways between the veteran Eddie Ockenden, Jack Welch and Commonwealth Games gold medalist Josh Belts. We don't get to play or really any internationals that often, so um, any opportunity we can get in front of a big Tassie crowd, we'll take it. While Jeremy Haywood hit the sweet spot not once, scores, but twice in nearly identical shots on goal, the Aussies blew their 2-0 lead and ended up faltering against Argentina in penalties. To get to 2-0 is really positive and we're obviously doing some things right, but at the same time to, I suppose, concede a 2-0 lead is pretty disappointing as well. Maybe a different result tonight against Spain. Matty Brooks has been back in action for the Hockey Roos in tonight's game against the United States, but the Aussies have struggled to convert penalty corners. Despite having plenty of possession, the score was locked at nil all at the end of the game and the US won 3-1 in a penalty shootout. Jared Bairstow will once again stay in Tasmania this NBL off-season, with the Jack Jumpers player signing on again for the charges in the NBL 1. The 30-year-old joining fellow teammate Sam McDaniel in the squad, their experience set to be used as the reigning Premiers prioritise the development of Tasmanian talent this season. The opportunity to continue developing sort of the brand of Tasmania. Um, yeah, I just love playing down here, love being amongst the community. The second piece of the puzzle signed, ready to go, and a really important part, again, around that, that culture. Besto will miss the first few rounds as he recovers from ankle surgery. Tasmania will have a horse in this month's $5 million All-Star Mile with the inevitable making it into the final field. The public getting behind the seven-year-old who secured the sixth highest vote tally. The gelding will go into the Autumn Carnival on a hot streak, winning his last seven local races. The All-Star Mile will be run at Melbourne's Mooney Valley Racecourse on Saturday, March 18. And finally, Tasmania's footy community has paid tribute to Lance Spalding, who passed away yesterday. He had a decorated 30-year coaching career in the TFL, TSL and community football, along with the Devils and Mariners programs. Lance just transcended that. He just, he was just a genuine good bloke. You know, you could not like him. I know a lot of people in footy will be hurting. Um, a lot of people in our workplace are certainly hurting. Um, yeah, one of, one of the genuine good guys. Spalding was 62.
Good evening. Well, what happened today? I can tell you Launceston and Devonport had our top with 24 degrees. Hobart reached 23 and Burnie 22. We did have a few light showers, though, over the west and far south, otherwise fine. St Helens and Friendly Beaches 23, Low Head and Bushy Park 21, Flinders Island and Grove 20, King Island 19, Strawn 18 degrees. Fine and partly cloudy conditions apart from that low cloud with showers over the west and far south. More low cloud over the southern coast of the mainland. Inland Queensland has cloud attached to a trough with more over the top end, of course. Tomorrow, a weak ridge of high pressure moves over our state. Low pressure troughs dominate the North Island. Westerly winds at 15 to 25 knots reaching 30 knots over the far south and lower east swells to 4 metres in southern waters. We do have a strong wind warning in the south for waters between Wineglass Bay and Low Rocky Point. Tomorrow for Hobart, a top of 21, a cloudy day, maybe a shower for Signet, 20 the maximum, 21 the high for New Norfolk. Launceston reaching for 25 degrees, fine and partly cloudy, Devonport 24, 24 also for Campbelltown, a fine day. Burnie partly cloudy, 21 the maximum, 18 the high for Strawn as showers move into the west again, Smithton a cloudy one and 21 degrees. St Helens partly cloudy and 22, 23 the top for Swansea, fine for Fingal, 24 the maximum. UV at 8 again and very high. On Friday, fine and partly cloudy, maybe a shower over the Ferno Islands, mostly fine on Saturday until a shower develops over the northeast and northwest, and it looks like the showers will be more widespread on Sunday. Perth 24, well that's the overnight low, a top tomorrow of 37, cloudy conditions for Adelaide, Melbourne and Canberra, a shower or two in Sydney, 31 and partly cloudy in Brisbane. A little bit of cloud over Hobart, it's 19 at the moment, clear in Launceston, 22 the current temperature, clear in Devonport and 19, that's the midweek weather, Kim. Thank you very much, Murph. I do like this autumn weather. Thank you. That is all your news for now. We'll be back throughout the night with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.